Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys new here, hello, my name is Pinky. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. As you guys can see here, we have a new spell for you guys. Obviously, Hallow's Eve is around the corner. We are so thrilled and excited. For those of you guys interested in consultations and spell work, healing, any of the services that we provide, you can go to an online store and purchase that on there. You'll find all the description information on the description box below. Anyways, let's get into it. Obviously, we just experienced a solar eclipse, which is major energies. Right now, a lot of things are shifting, a lot of major transformations. And obviously, we're going to be experiencing this for the next coming six months. But the beauty in this is that there is the timing, the circumstances, the planet alignments, everything is very, very palpable right now. So, of course, I could not have waited longer to bring you guys a new spell. For those of you guys that are interested in dominating your partner, having them walk a straight line, if they have a habit of having a wandering eye, this spell is for you. Not only are you going to be able to dominate them, but you're going to be able to draw them, like bring their whole attention towards you. Um, not focus in any outside energy from the relationship. So I, as I always tell you guys, do these type of works with mindfulness. Of course, don't do this on someone you just met. Don't get yourself tangled in all kind of craziness because then you'll be reaching out to me, having me fix it. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways. Let's get to the needy greedy. Like I said, this is basically to really turn their head around, <laughs> turn their head towards you, their attention, their focus, their devotion. So this is a very intense spell. This is a two-step spell. So I'm going to break it down and tell you guys exactly what it is that you need. So before anything, you guys know, you can see there our protective candle. Protective candles are extremely crucial in this practice, especially when it comes to these types of workings, okay? So make sure that you have your protective um, candles burning when you're doing this, when you're beginning all the way to the very end. Make sure to uh, incorporate it. It is very crucial and very important. Okay, so what you're gonna need is, you're gonna be needing a knife or anything, depending on what it is that you're into. You're gonna be needing a red candle, uh, as you guys can see here. You're gonna need some aluminum foil. You're gonna need, yes, a red bell pepper, as you guys can see here. Let me show you. As you guys can see here, it is a very, very auspicious time, like I said, and we want to make the most of it. By the way, those of you guys that are interested in the practice or in spells, definitely comment below, let me know, so that I can keep bringing these videos to you guys. I've kind of slowed down on spell work um, on here on YouTube only because, I don't know, they have this thing against me. I think it's because of what I'm teaching you. However, the more you guys interact, the more algorithm, it helps to get more views, to get more subscribers. So I truly appreciate you guys sharing, liking, and commenting, okay? And as always, if you do this, come back, comment below, and let me know what your experience or results were. Anyways, so like I said, red bell pepper, it is a, a, a very domineering type of ingredient that we use when it comes to dealing with very difficult targets or narcissistic or selfish uh, targets. So that's the reason why we're doing this. We're doing this for a client. So obviously I want to incorporate something that is going to be able to overpower this individual. So which is why we're using the red bell pepper. So you're gonna be needing a red bell pepper. You're gonna be needing a knife, a plate or tray where you can put your work, the aluminum foil. You're gonna be needing parchment paper. Now you cannot do this with the regular paper. It has to be a parchment paper. I know a lot of the times you guys ask questions um, and I invite all of you guys to ask as many questions as possible. I never, you guys already know my channel. I never go into this without telling you guys why we're incorporating certain things. I want you guys to know or be as knowledgeable as possible. Now, there are specific spells that are very forgiving with the type of, you know, ingredients that we use. Of course, back in the days, we were 
we would use whatever we're able to use, right? But there are specific spells, um, especially when it comes to offerings, that we need to use specific ingredients. So parchment paper is going to be very important. Like I said, a knife or a theme that you're going to need to cut the bell pepper. You're going to be needing a black marker, um, any type of black uh, marker. If you don't have a black uh, marker, you can incorporate a pencil. You can write the, in the parchment paper with a pencil, but you have to make sure that it's the number two pencil, okay? Why? Because it is more natural. It is more empowering when it comes to spell work. So you're also going to be needing three types of oils. Now you can use come to me oil, love oil, pega pega, which is follow me boy, um, <clears throat> or stick stick oil. You're going to be needing domination oil and you're going to be needing a tranquil oil. Now, these, the, specifically the Tranquil uh, oil may be not as easy or accessible for some of you guys. Um, if you don't have that, what you could do is you could incorporate some olive oil with some herbs that are uh, very domineering type of energies that you can incorporate that, uh, mix it very well, smash it very well, put it on a glass container and let it sit uh, the most I would say would be, or the least time I would say seven days before actually using the oil. Okay. So you're also going to be needing some sugar. And like I said, the parchment paper, the pencil or marker, you're also going to be needing a red candle. Like I said, it has to be a nine day candle. Um, because we're not only going to do the work, but like I said, it's a two step work. And I will tell you guys how to get to that. Um, so anyways, red candle, uh, red bell pepper, parchment paper, tranquil oil, uh, sugar, dominating oil, aluminum foil, uh, and a bowl or somewhere where you can prepare all the ingredients, um, although it's going to go somewhere else. So we'll get to that as quickly as possible. Anyways, let's get to the nitty gritty, you guys. So we're going to start off. You, of course, want to prepare your candle prepare your ingredients, pass some incense, depending on the work you're doing. Obviously, this is dominating type of spell work. Um, a little bit more on the dark side, uh, black, black magic, whatever you want to call it. I always tell my clients at the end of the day, black and white is the same thing. Why? Because everything in life is balanced. So let's not get into that. Anyways, um, what you're going to be needing is, like I said, you're going to be using a black marker or pencil. And what you're going to do, this is very important and very crucial, you guys. So you're going to be able, or you, you're you going to, okay, I'm going too fast, you guys. It's been a very long day. Let me center myself because I don't want to come off all over the place. Okay. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the parchment paper and we're going to write the target's first name, last name, and date of birth. Now, if you don't have their full name, you cannot do this. If you don't have their date of birth, you cannot do this. You have to have first name, last name, and date of birth. Of course, if they have a middle name, obviously their full name. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down their name, last name, obviously, and D-O-B, and you're going to go down, you're going to go down uh, writing this information seven times, okay? So it's going to go like this. Their name, last name, date of birth, name, last name, date of birth, all the way down seven times. You have to write their information down seven times, and we're going to do this in every corner. Yes, every corner, you guys. Name last date of birth, name, last date of birth. You're going to do this seven times going down like this. And you're going to do this in every corner, like I said. So when you're writing it down, right, you're going to write it down. It's going to look like this. We're going to start off here. Name, last name, date of birth, seven times all the way down. Then we're going to do it here. Then we're going to turn it your, um, sorry, we're going like this. Then you're going to turn it the same thing, name, last, date of birth. Now, the reason why we're doing this and we're writing down their name seven times 
is because seven is a very powerful number, as you guys would know if you've been following me for a while. There are specific numbers that we use in spell work depending on the type of working that it is and the type of result that we're wanting. Now, seven is correlated with angels, archangels. Um, it is also correlated with the person's guardian angel, the time of birth, etc. Let's not get into that. It's a very long thing to explain. But anyways, so we're using the number seven because it is, in fact, you're calling their, not necessarily their angel, but their spirit of the time of birth to now, um, which is why we're using seven or incorporating seven because it's a very angelic number. Like I said, we are in essence uh, asking their guardian um, or their guardian angel to favor us in this working. However, we're also using dominating spirits for this spell. So I know I can go deeper into this. A lot of the times uh, for some people I've had clients ask, you know, certain things don't necessarily like make sense off the bat because you have to go really deep into it in order for me to actually teach you guys when we work with angels and demons and spirits, etc. But anyways, it's a correlation. It's all connected and intertwined. Um, anyone that tells you otherwise is full of shit or don't necessarily know their practice. So as you guys know, uh, we work with different spirits here, many different spirits. There's no judgment. So if you guys have questions or are curious, you can comment below. I'll try to respond to um, all of you guys. All right. So like I said, we're going to have the parchment paper and we're going to write down first name, last name, date of birth, going down seven times in each corner. Now also corners are rep representatives of the guardian watchtowers of the elements, which is earth, air, fire, water. Um, the center, which we will be putting other information there is obviously spirit. Um, the assistance of our spirit or higher self or uh, our guardians to assist us in this working. Okay, so enough about that. We're going to write down uh, first name, last name, date of birth, all four corners, seven times. All right. So once we've done that, what we're going to do now is right at the center, you're going to put your information. It's going to be your name, last, and date of birth three times. Okay. So you're asking why it's because we are dominating. We are at the center. We're drawing their energy, their mind, their thoughts, their spirit in every single aspect um, and drawing it to the center, which is us. OK, so your first name, last name, date of birth, three times going down. All right. So once we do that, once we have that prepared, what we're going to do now is we're going to fold this paper seven times towards us. So we're going to do it like this. And you guys know we I work in threes. Every practitioner is very different, but especially for domineering type of spells, I work in threes, you guys. So, all right. So that's one, two. Always turning it to the right, right? Because the right is going clockwise. We are raising this vibration. I forgot how many times I did it. Anyways, you guys get it. We're going to do it seven times. Okay. I forgot right now because this is showing purposes. I already have mine over here, but... You guys pay attention to what you're doing. Whenever you're doing any type of spell work, especially when we're talking about dominating someone, you have to be very methodical, very focused, very center on what you're doing, you guys. I hear it all the time where clients will be like, oh, you know, I did your spell online and everything was going great and then it went south. A lot of the times is because your energy is all over the fucking place. You want to be centered when doing any type of work, not just love workings, any type of work. Um, 
you know, I can go deeper into that, but let's not, because then you have people saying I talk a lot on my videos, <laughs> which I don't really care at this point. But anyways, okay. So you're going to fold the paper seven times. All right. Once that is done, I'm going to put this to the side because I'm going to bring in the actual work I've already prepared. So when you cut the bell pepper, what you're going to do is you're going to take out the seeds that are in there, but do not remove the ones that are at the top just the center ones and it's going to look like this okay so once we've done that what we're going to do now is we're going to put the paper the parchment paper with the information that we just put obviously this is my client's work so i'm not going to show you guys obviously those of you guys that have worked with me you know i am extremely private and respectful of my client's information so at this point let's just say you don't have it you know cut you're going to get your knife, whatever you're using, you're going to cut it, you're going to remove the seeds, just leave the ones that are at the top, and you're going to put the parchment paper inside as such, okay? So once we've done that, what we're going to do now is we're going to get, we're going to add the sugar. Now, you're supposed to use three spoons, three spoons of sugar, but I personally use three big ass ones, <laughs> as you guys can see. All right, so once that is done, okay, give me one second. I'm taking it in steps, you guys. Okay. So once we've done that, we've already put the sugar and we're going to introduce the, okay, so let's charge it at this point. So once you put, when we start putting the ingredients, in, we're empowering, okay, you guys? So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I bless and consecrate. Okay, so once that is done, what we're going to chant is as proceeding. We're going to say abracadabra. And you're going to do this motion until you start to feel a warm, tingly sensation. Okay, once we get there, what you're going to say is it is not the chili pepper I sweetened. It's the spirit alive, judgment, thoughts, and will of, and you're going to name your target. So let me say it again. It is not the chili pepper I sweetened. It's the spirit alive, judgment, thought, and will of. Now we're going to add the oils like I had mentioned to you guys. We're going to use the dominating one. You don't need very much of it. Now we're going to be using the pull, pull. Now, as you guys know, we're going to add the Tranquil oil here. Okay. It is not the chili pepper that with these oils I tranquilize, and you're going to say the person's name, but the spirit alive, judgment, thoughts, and will. And like I said, you're going to say the person, the target's name. Putting your intention and your energy towards this, okay? It is very important and very crucial to make sure that you're being clear with the intention of what you're doing this for. So as a backstory, uh, client's been 
you know, with this person for a while, they just don't want to change their habits. Um, they don't want to have or quit having a wandering eye. Um, but they're still there, right? So we're trying to dominate their personality because they could be a bit, uh, narcissistic to be honest. So, uh, this is why we're doing this. Um, like I said, don't do this. If you're doing it for someone you just met, you do not want to go down that route. Okay. All right. So once that is done, like I said, you will say, um, once the oil has basically you added the oil, you're going to say the enchantment that I did. I will put all of this on the description. I know a lot of the times you guys get a little bit confused on the chance. So I'm going to start incorporating that on the videos now the way I did uh, way, way back. Okay. So once that is done and once you've charged, what you're going to do now is you're going to uh, cover it. You're going to cover the chili. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Not like that. Oh my. Okay, here we go. So once you do that, what you're going to do now is you're going to cover it with the aluminum. like this be mindful you guys and careful when you're done doing this work um, do not touch your eyes or anything like that until you've washed your hands because obviously it's you know it's a pepper all right so once that is done we're going to put this to the side now we're going to get the candle now, as always, like I tell you guys, uh, blessing and consecrating your candles are very important. What you're going to do with the marker is you're going to write down the first name, last name, and date of birth of the target, meaning your partner, the person you're doing this to. Now, I have that information already back here because obviously I'm not trying to show you guys my client's information, but what you want to do is you want to get either some holy water or some holy water or some uh, consecrated water that you use for your rituals to cleanse your candle to remove any negative or excess negative energies all right so once you do that i'm going to show you guys how to enchant the candle okay so once that is done, what we're going to do is, oh, let me make sure they're not showing <laughs> the name of the target. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put both your, both the palms of your hands on this candle side by side, as you guys can see here, and you're going to chant. It is not a candle I fix my attention towards, but the spirit of life, judgment, thoughts, and will of target, you're going to say that target or your person's first name last name date of birth so give me one second it is not a candle i fix my attention towards but the spirit of life judgment thought and will of you're going to say come and then you're going to say their first last name and date of birth because I call to thee I command you I dominate you and you're gonna say the targets name again Tank tranquility you will not have until you come to me surrendered and humiliated to my feet all right so I'm gonna say it again you guys it is not a candle I fix my attention to, but the spirit of life, judgment, thought, and will of, and you're going to say target's name. Come, and then you're going to say target's name again. Because I call to thee, I command you, I dominate you. 
you're going to say the person's name again. Tranquility you will not find until you come to me surrendered and humiliated to my feet. Then you're going to say, the way I pierce this candle, you're going to get your knife or raffine, as you guys can see here, and you're going to stab it, okay, when you say this. So I will tell you guys again. The way I pierce this candle, stab it, hold it there for a while. The way I pierce this candle, your heart I pierce with my wishes to forget other women or men, whatever they're into, whatever you're doing this for, and come to me. You're going to say Target's name again. I call to thee. All right? Then you remove it, and you're going to say it again, holding the candle. The way I pierce this candle, I pierce your heart with my wishes to forget other women or men and come to me. You're going to say the target's name again. I call to thee. You're going to do this three times, you guys. The way I pierce this candle, I pierce your heart with my wishes to forget other women and to come to me. Your name, first name, last name, date of birth. I call to thee. So I might have confused you guys there in the very beginning. You're going to say this three times. The way I pierce this candle, I pierce your heart with my wishes to forget other women and come to me. As an example, Pinky, right? So you're going to say your first name, last name, and date of birth. Again, the way I pierce this candle I pierce your heart with my wishes to forget other women and come to me. You're going to say your first name, last name, date of birth. I call to thee. You're going to say this three times. If you guys are a bit confused, I will put all the chants uh, on the description so it could be much easier for you guys, okay? So once that is done, like I said, very important to chant that three times. Once that is done, the spell work has begun. You're going to put it together. Let me cover. Okay. You're going to put it together and you're going to say, I charge this work. The spell has begun. When you light this candle, what you're going to do is you're going to light it and you, you're not going to interrupt it. You're, you're going to let it burn out completely. You're not going to F with it at all. So once this is done, everything's done, what you're going to do is you're going to light it. It's already charged. It's already enchanted. You're ready to go. Keep it at an altar or keep it anywhere where you know it's not going to be disturbed. So you're going to let it burn out completely. Keep in mind, you guys, as quickly as a nine-day candle uh, burns, it's as quickly as your results are going to be. So as an example, it's a nine-day candle. Let's say it burns in 12 days. It just means that there was a lot of resistance. You will still be getting rendered results, but it may take a bit of a process. For others of you, it may burn out in four days. It just means that... The energy was extremely high. Your spirits favored you. Um, so again, you're going to obviously uh, get very, very quick results. So once that is done, what you're going to do now is you're going to get the bell pepper. And what you're going to do is you can put it either in. I usually put it in a Ziploc bag and you're going to put it in the freezer and you're going to leave it there until this candle is complete. Now, I prefer to leave these workings for about up to 20 days in the freezer, um, you should get results uh, before that. Um, as an example, if you get amazing results, you can just take it out, um, put it, plant it somewhere, bury it somewhere, offer it to the spirits uh, in, in gratefulness and thankfulness. Uh, as an example, you can feed birds, you can give them seeds or as an offering, making sure that you give the spirits of uh, domination um, being thankful, basically, uh, like I said, I would just put this in the freezer, keep it uninterrupted, untouched in the freezer all the way to the back where, you know, no one's going to mess with it. Leave it there for a good 20 days. Of course, you can leave it there much longer if you want to continue seeing the results. Uh, but keep in mind that spell work does run its course. So once you start to see that they start to become a little bit more distant, you can always recast. You can do this. Just make sure use, you know, common sense. Don't do this like 
every week in the month. Like it's going to become very, very chaotic. You want to give it enough time to see the rendered results. As an example, I, after doing this, tell my clients after four or five months that they start to grow a little bit distant or a little bit colder back to their old behavior. You know, it's time to, you know, uh, recast and redo this spell. Um, again, I hope that if you guys do try this out, it gives you amazing results. You guys, I do this for my clients all the time, especially when we're dealing with very narcissistic or, uh, people that are very prideful that they think their shit doesn't stink and that they try to overpower you all the time. Um, this is ideal for that. Now, like I said, the candle as quickly as it burn is as quickly as you're going to get results. If it takes longer than nine days, just be mindful. It's important to be patient with spell work. Don't go being all crazy. I've dealt with a lot of clients that come to me uh, to clean their work because they did work on a person over and over and over and over because they weren't or they thought they weren't getting results. And then it became very crazy or a little bit out of hand or even physical. Um, you have to understand that though you may think that the work that you're doing is not taking any type of result, it is energy that you're putting out. So it will manifest, maybe not as quick as you would want it to at some point. And that's the reason why you keep doing other spells. Um, but then when it happens, it's like a whole ball of shit that you cannot deal with because it's a lot of craziness. So be mindful of that, you guys. All right. Anyways, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, after it's been done, after you've enchanted your candle, put this in the freezer, leave it there uninterrupted, light your candle, leave it by your altar or somewhere where you know it's not going to be disturbed. Once it's completed, be grateful, be thankful. I usually give offerings to the spirits that I work with uh, once the spell has been completed. So you can do the same. Make it a habit of being grateful and being thankful when incorporating other spirits, other deities, or other saints into your work. Uh, it is always crucial and very important. They give to us, but they can take as well. So be grateful, you guys. All right, my lovelies. I want to wish you guys the very best. Hope you enjoy. If you do do this, come back and let me know how it went. I wish you guys the very best, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.